spirit of the helper. Come and help us. Come and speak to us. In the mighty name of Jesus, you are welcome. We love you, Holy Spirit. We love you, Holy Father. Therefore, come to us. Come to us. Come and visit us. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Come to us, O Father. Come to us, O Heavenly Father. In the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. The only person who doesn't want us to receive from God is the devil. And we want to come against the evil one in the name of Jesus. We are gathered here to hear from the Lord and we will get all that the Lord has for us. So let us come against every demon that may be. make us wonder whilst the word is being taught. Any demon that is sent from the kingdom of the devil to come and hinder us from getting that which the Lord has for us. Let us attack it. Let us tell it to stay on its side of the road. So come against the devil in the name of Jesus. Yes. Satan in the, in the name, name of Jesus, yes, Satan, I, I bind you, I break Jesus, all your strongholds in, in the name of Jesus. Of Jesus. Yes, every demon that is sent to hinder us from getting Jesus, that which we have to get, yes, I come against you in the name of, of Jesus. Jesus. Any hinder spirit, Jesus. any demon that is sent to, to, to make our mind wonder, I come against you in the name of Jesus. You are defeated, Satan, for telling you that I bind you, I break your strongholds in the name of Jesus. You are defeated, Satan. Yes, in the name of Jesus, we will receive from the Lord as we will receive with the soul. In the name of Jesus, I command you to stay on your side of the road. Satan, stay on your side of the way. In the name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, I command you to go. In the name of Jesus, you are defeated. You are defeated. In the name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, let's just raise our hands and say, God, because he's here with us and he will speak to us in the name of Jesus. Oh, thank you. I thank you, oh, Father, thank you, for that which you have in store for us. Thank you, Father, for the one that you have brought us. Thank you, Father, you are visiting us with yes, bread. Thank you, I thank you, oh, Father, thank you, Jesus, for the bread. Thank you, Father, thank you, Jesus, for the bread. I thank you, oh, Father, you are here with us. Thank you, Holy Spirit, you have come to help us. Thank you, Father, we welcome you. Thank you, Father, we welcome you and we tell you we love you. We welcome you and we tell you we love you. Welcome you and we say we love you. You are welcome in this place. Come and work amongst us in the mighty name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let us receive the worship team. Hallelujah. Come to us. Come to us, O King of Jerusalem and reign. O Lord of Zion and Come to us. So oh, King of Jerusalem and reign, hallelujah, O oh, Lord of Zion, and come to us, come to us, O oh, King of Jerusalem and reign, hallelujah, O oh, Lord of Zion, and we come to you with praises, Lord, we bow before
close in Leeds United Kingdom uh, this is the extension of Bako uh, we want to welcome you on behalf of our father the apostle and prophet Enzo Taunashe and his wife uh, who are always spearheading uh, and teaching us during these lockdowns uh, the forms of the house like we earlier heard that it is in the word of God that we must always gather in the houses hearing getting teaching from the word of God. Amen. And today uh, we are really uh, uh, excited and we thank God for his servant apostle. And once again, we want to say uh, a happy birthday to you for yesterday. 
uh, because Amen. today is Tuesday when we are meeting to uh, uh, hear the teaching uh, of the word of God uh, in the houses. You now in the early church, doctrine of the apostles were being emphasized and taught in the home groups. So in the African revival and the worldwide family of God church, wherever you are, you must meet every Tuesday, some places, Wednesday, for an hour to hear the teaching of the word of God. And what we do in this uh, uh, home groups is we'll be going through the teachings we've heard from the servant God, the apostle, and also emphasizing on the issues of doctrine and what God can do and what we can do to build upon the foundation which was laid, uh, which the servant of God, the apostle, has laid for us in the African revival, in the family of God church. So I want to welcome you and uh, you may take your seats and let's give a clip offering unto the Lord. Amen. 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 Uh, today is a great day and uh, we want to look into the word of God. Uh, and uh, before I, 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 I uh, teach you today on our lesson on what we are going to teach, I want to thank God for Bishop Comfort with Township for the past two weeks. He has been going through uh, teachings which are relevant for us to build the house of God. And uh, these teachings we get in the home groups, it's not just as a, 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 as a ritual that every Tuesday we meet and then we hear and do nothing about it. Mm -hmm. Whatever we hear in the home group, whatever is taught in the home group, we must come to a place where we apply it in our settings in different churches, in our area churches, in our home groups, that uh, what we have learned become reality or become flesh. So it is important that we go to what I call the practical application of the teachings we hear in the home group must be applied within our settings. Amen. So last week, we had a powerful teaching from uh, Bishop Comfort and uh, he was teaching us about sonship. Uh, that number one, we must be sons of God and also sons to the servant of God. He uh, gave us a number of examples that uh, 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 like Timothy who was a faithful son who had a relationship with the servant of God who would do things and the servant of God could depend on him. So, uh, you know, when I was thinking about this, uh, taking this in line with the word which the servant of God taught to us or preached to us this Sunday, I felt that today uh, I must come to you and uh, just speak to you briefly a, a teaching on aligning ourselves with the prophetic word or the word of fruitfulness, the word of gatherings. Uh, you know, it is important that we as the church, as the people of God, we align ourselves as sons. Sons must align themselves with what God is speaking what God is commanding us in the home group, in the church, in every Sunday. So, as sons, we must, you must align, we must align ourselves uh, for the <coughs> habit, for fruitfulness, even for the gatherings which God has been speaking to us. Amen. We must align ourselves, we must put ourselves in line, in track, moving according to what God is instructing us. Amen. True sons, they follow. Their father's instructions. Right. So I'm going to read a number of scriptures uh, with you and then I'll say some few things and we are going to pray. Uh, and, and as we get into this home group, as we start our home group, it is important uh, that uh, before I speak to you to align yourself with the word, the prophetic word, <coughs> the word of fruitfulness, the word of gatherings, whatever the servant of God is speaking to us, if you are out there, you have not yet given your life to Christ. You must align yourself with the will of God. And that will of God is in his son, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Bible tells us, he who has the son has got life. But he who does not have the son does not have life. We cannot talk about aligning yourself with the word when you are not a child of God. That's right. You see, uh, what is important before you hear the word of God, before you get in miracles in your life, you need to have a good relationship with the Father. Amen. 
Amen. But what, what is happening <coughs> you out there if you have not given your life to Jesus? It is sin and the devil who has separated you from God. But God loves you. He wants you to have a relationship with him that when he speaks, you'll be able to obey him. He said, number one, sonship is that you must be a son of God. And you cannot become a son of God simply because you were born into the world. Because you were created. When you are like that, you are as good as any other animal which was created by God, any other tree. But there are certain people who are called children of God. Those who believe in him, who are born of God, who sins are forgiven. Where the Bible says, he who has the son has got life, and who does not have the son does not have life. Mm -hmm. That's why the Bible tells us that God loved us when we were in our sins. He sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross to be the propitiation of our sins. It doesn't matter what your sins may be. It doesn't matter what you've committed. When you come to God, he will forgive you. It's the Lord God who said, even if your sins are as red as scarlet, he will wash you and you become as white as snow. So before we proceed, I want to give you an opportunity that you may come to Jesus Christ, that you may have a relationship with him, that you may know that God is your father and he loves you and you may live a life where you say, God is my son. And when you do that, you, when you become a son of God, then you can become a son of the Son of God, like what Bishop Comfort was teaching us. Whilst you are sitting there, whilst you are wherever you are, in the house where you are, I want to give you an opportunity. Jesus is saying to you, I am at the door of your heart knocking. If you open your heart, you will come in and eat with you and change you and give you a new life, a new life, and you live a, a better life. I want to pray with you that Jesus may come into your life, that he may forgive you, change you, and make you a child of God. If you are one of them, you want, you are saying, Pastor, pray for me. I want to become a child of God. I've been living like the devil. I've been living in sin. The devil has been harassing me left. I didn't say that. But today I make a choice. I want to have a new beginning, a new beginning with God himself. I want you to lift up your right hand and take your left hand and put it on your heart. I want you to pray with me that Jesus may come into your heart, forgive you, change you, and make you a child of God. And as you raise your hand like that, I just want you to pray boldly a prayer of inviting Jesus into your heart to be the Lord and the Savior of your life. And let's pray together and say, Dear God in heaven, dear God in heaven, I come to you today. I come to you today with my sins, with my sins, with my weakness, with my weaknesses. I come to you in humility. I come to you in humility. I ask you that you may forgive my sins. I ask you that you may forgive my sins. That you may change me. That you may change me and make your son. And make me your son. I call upon you, Lord Jesus. I call upon you, Lord Jesus. Come into my heart. Come into my heart. Forgive my sins. Forgive my sins. Change my nature inside. Change my nature inside. Make me a child of God. Make me a child of God. Wash my sins by your blood. Wash my sins by your blood. Satan. Satan. And all your works. And all your works. And all your demons. And all your demons. I reject you today. I reject you today. I declare. I declare. That I am now a child of God. I am now a child of God. I am now a son of God. I am now a son of God. I will live for the Lord. I will live for the Lord. I will worship God. I will worship God. In truth and in spirit. In truth and in spirit. And I will dwell in his house forever. And I will dwell in his house forever. I thank you Lord Jesus. I thank you Lord Jesus. For forgiving me. For forgiving me. And making me a child of God. And making me a child of God. In Jesus' name I pray. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 I want to welcome you into the kingdom of God. Amen. Uh, if you have played that prayer with all your heart, inviting Jesus to come into your life to forgive your sins, make you a child of God, you are now a child of God. Amen. Because the Bible tells us, it, 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 it tells us, that whosoever, it was Jesus said, whosoever <coughs> comes to me, I will not likewise cast him out. Because you have decided to come to Jesus, he has received you, you are now a son of God. Amen. Like what we heard last week, that you need to be a son of God first. What, who is a son of God? That one whose sins are forgiven, Amen. whose sins are washed away, because they called upon Jesus to be the Lord and the Savior of their lives. Because you have prayed that prayer, Jesus has come into your life. He has forgiven you. You are now a child of God. 
you are welcome into the kingdom of God. Now you can raise your hand and say, Lord, thank you for forgiving my sins. I'm now your child right now. Let's just thank God that he has, he has forgiven you. Thank God yourself that, Lord, that thank you for saving me. Thank you for making me a child of God. I will live as a son. I will be a son indeed. I will worship you in truth and in spirit. And I will gather together with the people of God in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for every person who has heard my voice and prayed this sinner's prayer and committed their life to Christ. I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, that you may help them, O God. Father, if they are now your sons and daughters, Father, I pray that you may help them in the mighty name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you, Father, for hearing our prayers, for hearing us, for forgiveness. And thank you, Father, for the power of forgiveness. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, in Jesus' name. In that same spirit, when you become a child of God, you see, the Bible tells us uh, that when you become a child of God, you will be a son to all those who received him. He gave them the power to become the sons of God. Amen. So I say, welcome, son of God into the kingdom of God. Amen. They have come back to your father. Now continue to stay in the house of your father and worship him. But this father doesn't just want you to come in your weakness. You know, many times he said, how can I continue to play? How can I continue to do things? He doesn't want you to live a powerless life. Mm -hmm. When you give your life to Jesus, there's something which he always gives you. He gives you his Holy Spirit. That that's Holy Ghost may help you May give you power to do things, to pray, or to pray, to read the word of God, to understand the things of God. Many people, when they give their life to Christ, and they they are not sure, they are they are really confused. Oh, I can't pray on and on and on. I can't listen to the word of God. It is because you don't have that power. Mm -hmm. But when you shall receive power, the Bible tells us in the book of Acts, chapter number eight, uh, chapter number one, verse number eight, you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Mm -hmm. So you need the power to continue. Amen. Power to save him, power to love him, power Amen. to do things for him. And this power is the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So it is important that you receive the Holy Spirit, that you may be empowered to do God, to save God, to, with power to overcome sin, power to love, power to do great and mighty things. I want to pray for you that the Holy Spirit may come upon you. But how do you receive the Holy Spirit? It is only when you ask. It is when you ask God, like God is a father. When you want something from the Father, you go to him and say, Father, I want this and he will do it to, to, for you. So if you go to God and ask him, Father, fill me with the Holy Spirit, baptize me with the Holy Spirit. I want the power of the Holy Spirit. He will give you the Holy Spirit. Amen. He will not give you, the Bible says, uh, God is not a, a, a unfaithful father. If your earthly fathers are able to give you your petition, the things you ask, if you ask for bread, they will give you bread. If you mm -hmm. ask for fish, they will give you a fish. They won't give you a stone. So, our Father God of heaven, if you ask God for the Holy Spirit, He will give you the gift of the Holy Spirit. So, wherever you are, if you want to be filled with the Holy Ghost, if you have not been filled with the Holy Spirit, I want you to ask God that God fill me with the power of the Holy Spirit. Baptize me. I want that power of the Holy Spirit. Let us lift up our hands to God and ask for the power of the Holy Spirit that it may be upon us. That it shall be endured from the power from high and the power, that power of God is releasing it. Ask God right now in the name of Jesus. As you ask God for the power of the Holy Spirit, I'm going to pray for you that God may fill you and baptize you with the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray, Father, for every one of your people who is desiring, Father, to receive the power of the Holy Spirit, to be baptized with the Holy Spirit. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ from this house and also across the world that those who don't have the gift of the Holy Spirit, Father, that you may fill them with the Holy Spirit. And I declare, I said, receive you the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus Christ, receive you the power of the Holy Ghost. Be filled with the Holy Spirit wherever you are right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, receive the Holy Ghost. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, receive that power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, we resist that power upon your life. In Jesus' name, in the mighty name of Jesus. Now that you have asked God to fill you with the Holy Spirit, now I want you to thank Him now. That he has done it because he is a faithful God. When he asks, 
you will give it out to you. Now say, Lord, thank you for filling me with the power of the Holy Spirit, for baptizing me with the Holy Ghost. Just thank God right now in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Father, for the power of the Holy Spirit, for that new touch of the Holy Spirit of God. Even upon our lives, upon the lives of your people, oh, Father, those who have not received the Holy Spirit eh, before, Father, Father, you have touched them, oh God, you have released that power upon their lives. In the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, of Jesus Christ, we thank you for oh, power. Yes, Lord, in the name of Jesus, the power of the Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost that which gives them victory over sin and purity divine. That it is upon them right now. In the name of Jesus. Yes, in Jesus' name. Because you have, you have asked the God to fill you with the Holy Spirit, God has given you the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God is already upon your life. Now, when the Spirit of God is upon your life, God gives you new language. You, the Bible tells us those who were filled with the Holy Spirit, they started to speak in other tongues. They didn't speak with the language which they understand. It was not their mother language, the language they speak. They started to speak in other tongues. Now, I don't want you to speak in the language of your understanding wherever you are. I want you to just raise your hands. God is going to give you words. Just release those words. Those words are the words. It is the language of the Spirit. Just worship God. Just let go. The Spirit of God is already upon you. In the name of Jesus. Yes, in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord. Jesus. Hallelujah. Alleluia. You know, when God saves you, when God uh, makes your child of God, when he gives you the Holy Spirit, one of the things which he desires is that you may be made whole. The Bible tells us that in the book of John, he said, I wish above all things that you may prosper and that you may be in health. God's desire for your life is not that you may be sick, that you may die of sickness, die of COVID, that you may suffer from all these ailments, pandemic. He wants to heal you. Amen. Before we proceed, I want to pray that God may touch your life, that God may heal you from all your sicknesses. He is the Lord God who is our healer. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And that healer is in this place. You know, the Bible tells us in the book of Acts how, Jesus, how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth by, with the Holy Spirit and power. And he went about doing good, preaching the gospel, healing the sick, and then setting free those who were bound. And one of the works of the Holy Spirit through Jesus Christ, through us, is that he wants to heal all your diseases and all your infirmities. If you are sick in your body, just touch where you are. You, you, you touch where there is pain. Touch If you if the whole body is sick, just touch your chest. I'm going to play a prayer of healing right now. He came that you may have life and have it abundantly. In the book of Romans, chapter number 8, verse number 11, the Bible tells us if the spirit of him that raised Jesus Christ from the dead, which is the Holy Spirit, dwells in you, if it dwells in you, it will quicken your mortal bodies. I'm praying for the quickening of your mortal bodies right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, there's someone on the street, there's someone seated in the home group right now. You are sick and you are thinking that you are going to die of COVID-19. You are going to die of hypertension. You are going to die of that disease. But you will not die. You will live and declare the works of the Lord. You spirit of death, I bind you and I cast you out in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, I declare life and healing in the name of Jesus Christ. I command life and healing upon your body. Yes, in the name of Jesus Christ. You, you who is sick, who is sick right now, you are in bed because of COVID-19, because of this variant. You are afraid, you are, you are in fear. I Come against that violence right I put it in the name of Jesus Christ. And I declare that let the, that spirit of God that dwells in you, that raises the from the dead, quicken your mortal body. Be thou healed in the name of Jesus Christ. Head yet, I command you to go. Sickness, I command you to go. You might head it go. You back pain, I say go. Yes, you COVID-19, I say go. Hypertension, go. Diabetes, go. In the name of Jesus. Be thou healed right now. Receive the life of God. 
Siki bodi ataka madaba sababa ba. Ibodo dobo koso tobo dobo bo. I command that fever to go. Let it leave your body right now in the name of Jesus. Let that fever go in the name of Jesus. Let that weakness go in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Let God give you strength. Let them be strength in your legs. Let them be strength in your legs right now. Let them be strength in your legs right now. Let them be strength in your body. In the name of Jesus Christ. I release life and healing upon your body. In the name of Jesus. Be thou healed in Jesus' name. Let's give a clap of hand to the Lord for healing. Yes, in the name of Jesus. Wherever you are right now, test yourself. God has already touched you. He has already healed you. The Spirit of God, the Spirit of God the, uh, that raised Jesus Christ from the dead, which dwells in you, has already quickened your mortal body. It's quickening your body right now. In the name of Jesus. Let's confess it. Let, <laughs> let's do it. Let's do it. A powerful confession. It says the Spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead. The Spirit that raised Christ Jesus dwells in me. Dwells in me. Because it dwells in me. Because he dwells in me. It's quickening my mortal body. He is quickening my mortal body. It is quickening my throat. It's quickening my throat. It's quickening my lungs. It's quickening my lungs. It's quickening my ligaments. It's quickening my ligaments. It's quickening my pancreas. It's quickening my pancreas. It's quickening every part of my body. It's quickening every part of my body. And I am made whole. And I am made whole. In Jesus' name. Jesus. Amen. Let's give a clap of hands to the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are welcome into the kingdom of God. Now that you are a son of God, you can now align yourself with the prophetic word, with the word which God is speaking to us through his servant, the apostle. But before I say those words, I just want to read. I'll read the number of scriptures and then I'll just let you, I'll teach you a few things which we must align ourselves with the word of God for the harvest, for the fruits, and also for the gatherings which God has been speaking to us. And uh, as, we, as, as, we, as we audit our lives, as we align ourselves with the measure which God wants us to measure in our service of God, in our love for God, in our commitment, in our love for one another, love for the servant of God, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's open our Bibles. Amen. And we are going to read from the first and foremost from the book of Second Peter, chapter number one. Uh, I will read three verses from there, and then we go to uh, the book of Genesis, uh, uh, Genesis eighteen, Genesis twenty-two, and then Second Kings, chapter number seven. As we open to the Word of God, let's make a good confession. Let's say the word of God is alive. The word of God is alive. It is active. It is active. And it is working in my life today. And it is working in my life today. The Lord gives wisdom. The Lord gives wisdom. Out of his mouth. Out of his mouth. Proceeds knowledge and understanding. Proceeds knowledge and understanding. And I receive it today. And I receive it today. Hallelujah. And I receive it today. And I receive it today. Second Peter chapter number 1 verse 19, um, 19 to 21. We have also a more sure word of prophecy. Where until you do well, that you take heed is unto a light that shine in darkness until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of scripture is of private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of men, but only by but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 We are going to Genesis chapter number 18. First book of the Bible, Genesis chapter number 18. Amen. <coughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Do you have a Bible with you? A paper Amen. Bible, the best Amen. for you. Amen. Hallelujah. <coughs> Na, chapter number 18 from verse 1 of Genesis chapter number 18. I will read the number of scriptures, but I'm not going to talk as much as I read. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And the Lord appeared unto him in, in, in the plain of Mambre, and the, as he said, as he sat in the tent door in the heat of the day, and he lifted up his eyes, looked, lo, three men stood by, uh, stood by him, and he saw them, and he ran to meet them uh, from the tent door, 
and bowed himself to, towards the ground and said, My Lord, <coughs> if now I have found favor in thy sight, pass not away. I pray thee from thy servant. Let a little water, I pray thee, and fetch and and and, and, and fetch sorry. Let a little water, I pray you, be fetched and wash your feet and rest yourself under the tree. And I'll fetch a morsel of bread and comfort you, your hearts, after you, you shall pass on. For therefore, are you come to your servant, as they said, so do as thou have said. And Abraham hastened <coughs> into the tent unto Sarah, said, Make ready quickly three measures of fine meal, knead it, and make cake upon the heath. And Abraham ran unto the head and fetched a calf tender, good, and gave it unto the young man, and he hastened to dress it. And he took butter and milk and the calf which he had dressed and set before them. And he stood by them under the tree as they did eat. And they said unto him, Where is Sarah thy wife? And he said, Behold, in the ten. And he said, I will certainly return unto thee according to the time, to the life of time. Lo, Sarah, thy wife shall have a son. And Sarah had it in the tent door which was behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old and were stricken in age, and he ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. Therefore, Sarah loved within herself, saying, after I am whilst old, shall I have pleasure, my Lord being old also? And the Lord said unto Abraham, Whereof did Sarah laugh, saying, Shall I of surely be a child, which I am old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? At that time, at the time appointed, I shall return unto thee according to the time of life, and Sarah shall be, shall have a son. Then Sarah denied, saying, I loved not, for she was afraid. And he said, Nay, thou, nay but thou didst laugh. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And let's go to Genesis chapter number 22. This one is not as long as this one. Genesis chapter number 22. Verse 11 to 15. Okay, this is chapter number 2. <coughs> and the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham, he said, Here I am. And said, Lay not thy hand upon thy lot, neither do thy anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thy only son from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him a ram caught in the thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered, and offered him up for the bed offering in the instead of his son. And Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh, as it is said to this day, in the mountain of the Lord it shall be provided. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Lastly, we are reading from the book of Second Kings, chapter number, chapter number seven. Second Kings, chapter number seven. Second Kings, chapter number seven. This one to this number four. Then Elisha said, Hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord, Tomorrow about this time shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of Samaria. Then the Lord on whose hand the king leaned answered the man of God and said, Behold, if the Lord would make windows in heaven, might this thing be. 
And he said, Behold, thou shalt see it with thine eyes, but thou shalt not, thou shalt not eat thereof. Verse 3. And there were four leprous men at the entering in the gate, and they said one to another, Why sit we until we die? If we say we will enter into the city, then the famine is in the city. We shall die there. And if we sit here, if we sit still here, we die also. Now therefore, come, let us fall unto the host of the Syrians. And if they save us alive, we shall live. If they kill us, we shall but die. Mm -hmm. Let's just pray that God may give us a revelation and give us understanding of his word. In the name of Jesus Christ, Father, in the yes, name, of Jesus, name of Jesus, I pray, Father, for the spirit of revelation, this is spirit of understanding and wisdom of God and boldness, even as I speak and teach this way. Help us, O God, give us understanding in the name of Jesus Christ, that we may receive the word from you in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father. We give all the glory. We give all the honor. In the mighty name of Jesus, faithful and awesome God. There is Thank no one like unto your God you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Jesus name. We give all the glory, we give all the honor. You, Hallelujah. Amen. 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 You know, uh, as we learn and continue to align ourselves to hear from God, to operate as sons of God and sons of this revival, there is a burden in my life, me as a son of the servant of God, the apostle, uh, concerning sonship. I'm very happy and excited about uh, Bishop Comfort that he started this subject of sonship. But as sons, is one thing we must be and we must look at what is, I called as sons, we must, uh, as a son, you must align yourself for the harvest, for fruitfulness, for gatherings. It's one thing to hear the word of God and one thing to experience what God is saying. And the reason why certain things they don't happen to us, it is because number one, yes, we believe God, but we don't believe his servants. Mm. But the Bible tells us in the second book of Chronicles that when we believe God will be established. But there's something again, it's not only believing God, it is believing his servants that we may prosper. Amen. When you talk about prosperity, many people, they think that is getting money, is mm. getting material things. Prosperity mm. in the God's kingdom is the well-being of things everything that it will go well Amen. whether in your life in your marriage in your church in your business financially spiritual even in your soul Amen. and it is important that we if we are sons of god if we are the sons of this revival we must believe in god number one we must believe his servant Amen. from where we read in the book of second Tim, uh, second peter uh, 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 the Bible is open to us that uh, we have a more sure word of prophecy. And we do well when we take it that way. Amen. You know, when the word of God is spoken, it is important that every one of us be in Amen. agreement with that word. Amen. A true son, a person who wants to align himself for the promises of God, for the blessings of God, for fruitfulness, for the gatherings God is talking about, they must really uh, be in agreement with the word of God. Amen. Even God tells us that whatsoever you shall agree on it, you shall be bound in heaven. If two of you shall agree about anything, Amen. the Lord God of heaven will do it unto you. Amen. So when the word of God comes to us, it is important that we agree. We get into agreement with the word of God. Be in agreement in with what it says. Amen. This is number one. Be in agreement with what God, the word of God says. Amen. You can only be in agreement with what God is saying or with the prophetic word through what is called faith. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, the apostle was speaking to us this weekend that we must change our measure, even our measure of faith. Amen. And the only way you can agree with the word of God is to have faith in the word of God. Amen. Faith in God. Faith in his word. Faith in his servant. Amen. The vessel which God is using to speak that word. Amen. There's no way you can receive a word and that word can work for you if you don't receive the vessel which God is using to release and to send that word to you. That's Hallelujah. Right. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The word of the Lord came. You know, we, re we, 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 we read from the Bible that word of the Lord came uh, to Abraham and said, you shall have a child. 
Hallelujah. Mm, amen. But how did they take it? Mm -hmm. There are two people. They heard the word of God. Right. Abraham heard the word of God. That you shall have a son. You shall have a child. And the wife who was behind heard it also. That's right. Mm -hmm. But what was the problem? Sarah was not in agreement with what was happening there. Amen. She loved easy. That's right. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He said Sarah overheard it. Overheard the conversation in Genesis 18 where we read. And she ruled herself out. Yeah. So there are two people in the house of God. Those who hear the word of God, those who hear the word about changing our measure, and they are in agreement with they change their measure. Mm -hmm. Amen. Others they said, ha, ah, me. It cannot happen to me. Mm -hmm. I others can do it. When the prophet gives a thousand, ah, it cannot happen to me. Others can do it. That's right. Mm -hmm. The prophet is shouting and crying and saying, We have a PA system, we need to buy, we need to pay 92,000 uh, 92, US dollars. Others, they rule them out. They say those business, they begin to count the business people in the church. Those, they thought that they have money. Right. But God is talking about you. Amen. Be in agreement with the word of God. Amen. And by faith, you are able to do it. You know, it is true faith. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. When the word came to Abraham to say you shall have a child, Abraham agreed. And he went and told the wife, God forbid, that wife will laugh at the promise of God and what God mm -hmm. is saying. Mm -hmm. But finally, because she was, this is why there were enough reasons. You know, when God wants to do things, there are many reasons for you not to do them. But the apostle was speaking to us that we are sons of power. Amen. We are sons of promise. It doesn't matter what the reasons doesn't matter what obstacle is there. Mm. We must fight and do what you must do. Amen. That's why even Paul was saying to do a fight, a good fight of faith. Amen. In order for us to receive from him. In order for us to experience, to be fruitful. We have to fight for them. We have to fight for fruit. <coughs> we fight for productivity. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Sarah said, huh. Because I, I was too old, the miracle of God, <laughs> I'm too old for the miracle of God. Mm -hmm. That's what always happens to people. Okay. It's too late. I can't buy, build the house now. I'm 60 years old. I can't do a business now. Mm -hmm. I'm preparing for retirement. Mm -hmm. But I want you to know that you are not too old for the promise of God. Amen. You are Amen. not too old for the prophetic word. Amen. You are not too old for the challenges which God is bringing you and telling us is a revival. Right. Neither are you too small. Amen. Amen. You are well able to do it. Amen. For with God nothing shall be impossible. Right. Hallelujah. Amen. She said I was too old. Hallelujah. Amen. But I want you to, to know that it doesn't matter what you are supposed to do. You are well able to build a great home group where you are. Amen. You are well able to, to, to establish and build a great church where you are. Amen. And don't say the circumstance does not allow us. Mm. People do not allow me. But with the word of God, with the promise of God, you are well able to do it. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. Amen. I've learned in this revival, I learned in this African revival, when the servant of God called us to do things, when I myself was not in agreement, Right. Because I thought it was too difficult. Mm. But when I decided to align myself and agree with it, I saw it coming to pass. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. She did not say, I will not have a child. But she said, I, it cannot be. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Yeah. You know, there are certain things we have to change and allow, align ourselves with what God is saying. If I want to challenge ourselves, how many prophetic words, how many words, how many years have we passed by and we have yeah. excluded ourselves? The year of binding sheep, greater words, prospecting, rising stars, and we are expecting another year. Mm -hmm. Are you going to align yourself with that word so that something tangible may come out? 
Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. She said, how can it be? Because I'm too old. And she also went on to express an emotional and biological setup. How can it be? Because I no longer have feelings, you know? It's not about feelings. It's about what the word of God says. What mm -hmm. the prophetic word says. And I want you to know that the prophetic word is sure. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. What God says will come to pass. Amen. And you must, uh, you must be in agreement with what God is saying. Amen. Even this revival, be in agreement with what God is saying about us that we have to audit our measure. Amen. Our measure of faith, our measure of commitment, witnessing, doing things for God, love for the servant of God, love and commitment for God, for his servants, for his people, for his work. Let's us align ourselves with that way. When you do that, great things will happen. Hallelujah. Amen. It may look like it's a, 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 it may look like impossible situation, but it will come to pass. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, in the Bible, I can show you a number of examples. There are situations which looked impossible. In the book of Second Kings, chapter number seven, the prophet of God came and said, "Tomorrow, there will be fine flour in the city." Hallelujah. Amen. The reality was where and how will this happen? That's right. And this is always what happens. The devil big questions. Mm -hmm. Me, am I going to am I able to drive? Am I able to buy a car? Am I able Amen. to do a business? Am I able to do this? The situation will speak and you you conclude that it, as for me, I fell ten times. Mm. And because I fell ten times, I can't do it. Hallelujah. Amen. I can't mention. Certain honorable who went to write a, an exam <laughs> a number of times and then uh, after writing and writing and writing said, I'm not going to write anymore because I failed enough. <laughs> and I said to the honorable, you can still pass. Amen. You can still go and write. And the honorable went and wrote the test and she passed. Amen. But if she had ruled herself, do I say she? Yeah. <laughs> if the other people had ruled herself or himself he could be sitting today saying that I'm a failure mm. I can pass an exam <clears throat> hallelujah Amen. so I want to challenge you this word we are hearing day in day and <clears throat> night we must enter into a practical application of this word Amen. and fight it in our ordinary lives, in our ministry, in the building of the church, in our home groups, in our families. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 So, the Lord of the house in the times of Elisha even doubted the word which God has spoken through the servant of God. That's why I'm saying, today I want to speak to you about aligning yourself and being in agreement with the word which God speaks to us through his servant. Amen. She said, ah, over my dead body. <laughs> Some of the things we confess, they are dangerous. That's right. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. The Lord of the house even doubted the word of God and he did not eat it. He did not eat the flower. Hallelujah. Amen. So this same applies to the word of the harvest. The prophet said we are in the season of harvest, is it? Amen. If you doubt it, that does who harvest. And you hear, ah, this one harvested, this one is harvest, this one is harvest. And mm. the, the dangerous part is that onlookers and watchers of people will be harvesting, they will begin to begrudge and hate them. Mm. That's right. Hallelujah. Amen. But Believe the word of God that you may have your own harvest. Amen. That you may produce your own fruit. Churches, we want to produce our own fruit. Home groups, we want to produce our own fruit. As a revival, we want to produce our own fruit. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So I'm calling you in this, uh, our home group all over the world. 
that it is time. God is saying to us, it's harvest time. Align yourself with this season and take the harvest. Produce the fruit. Change your measure. Hallelujah. Amen. Take action and apply the prophetic word in your day-to-day -day life. Amen. You know, when the word of God comes, we always think that uh, the prophet is preaching to us only for the sake of the kingdom. Yes, the kingdom first. Mm. But it also applies to us. Right. If we apply the same principles we hear in our personal lives, we will benefit and God will bless us. Amen. Abraham, when God spoke to him, he agreed to what God was said and God even changed his name. Amen. That's what agreement with God is. Yeah. You change. The problem doesn't change your measure. Amen. How many of you on Sunday did you change your measure? Well, to show that you agree, you begin to change. Amen. If I want one dollar offering after change your measure, you say I'm now a ten dollar or hundred dollars person offering. Abraham, when God spoke to him, he agreed to what God was, what God, God has said. Change his name from Abraham to Abraham. What was he doing? Aligning himself with the word of the harvest of children. Amen. Father of many nations. Amen. Calling himself father of many nations. Yes. What was he doing? Aligning himself yes. with the prophetic word. With the word which God has spoken to you. So I want to challenge you. In your home group. In your area church. In your church. As you continue to hear the word of God day in day out. Even the camp which is coming. The word of harvest. The word of fruitfulness. The word of gatherings. The word of a, a changing our measure. Take action. And do things which cause or which trigger that harvest or that fruitfulness to happen to you or to come to you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Few things I want, examples I want to show you of people who align themselves or who put themselves to agree with the word of God. Amen. The first one we've already mentioned about him. Number one, Abraham. Abraham changed his name from Abraham to Abraham. Number two, the four lepers. We read in the, in the book of Kings. Took an action in pursuit of the harvest of the food, of the fruit of the things which God has promised. The situation was not conducive. <coughs> there, there was danger that they may die. But because they were people of faith. Lepers. With their leprosy. They say if we die, we die. Mm -hmm. If we stay, sit here, we die of hunger. Mm -hmm. If we get into the camp, we are going to be killed. But it's better for us to be killed whilst we are full. Let's go. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. They were in pursuit of the promise of God. That there was food in the tent. Hallelujah. Amen. Number three, example of people who, one of the person who aligned himself with the prophetic word or the word from God was the Shunammite woman acted on the word of God or the word of the servant of God, Elisha. Second Kings chapter number eight, verse one to eight, you can go and read that. The Shunammite woman acted on the word which he had heard from the servant of God. And this is what I'm challenging you. Are we taking action on the word which the servant of God is giving us? The seasons we have passed, remember the prophetic word does not expire. Amen. We must not say now, we are now talking about change of our changing measure. So fruit is no longer important. Gathering is no longer important. But Word is still the same. The prophetic word does not change. Amen. Let's go for it and claim it within our settings. Hallelujah. Amen. And then the fourth example, which is my last example in this home group today, is the widow of Zarepa. Hallelujah. 
Amen. In, 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 in 1 Kings chapter number 17, the story of the widow of Zalimah, we have read about it, we have read about it, that there was trouble, she had nothing to eat, but when the men of God said, give it to me, do this, do that, I think we must read that scripture. Let's go to 1 Kings chapter number 17 in conclusion, because it is important that we see how they, 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 they eh, 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 took the word of God and applied in their lives. Second, eh, First Kings chapter number 17. First Kings chapter number 17. Verse 8, from verse 8. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belonged to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman to sustain thee. So he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was, was, was there gathering of sticks. And he called to her, said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in the vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to fetch it, she called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thy hand. And she said, As the Lord liveth God, as the Lord God liveth, I have not a cake but a handful of meal in a barrel, a little oil in the case. And behold, I am gathering two sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat and die. Very interesting. No people, they want to die when they are full. <laughs> Hallelujah. <Amen. laughs> and Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go and do as thou hast said, but make me thereof a little cake first, and bring it unto me. And after, make it, make for thee and for thy son. For thus says the Lord God of Israel, the barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil uh, until the day the Lord uh, uh, sent it rain upon the earth. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah. Mark this verse. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah. Amen. And he and the house did it many days. Amen. You know, Amen. obedience to the word of a prophet of God. Amen. And there were all reasons <coughs> that she could say, uh, she wanted to die. She, if she had prepared for, her, for herself and her, and her son, who could be reading the story that they ate and died. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. And the barrel of meal wasted not, neither did the cruise of oil fell according to the word which the Lord, uh, which the Lord, which, according to the word of the Lord, which he spake by Elijah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. According to the word which is spoke by Elijah. Hallelujah. Amen. And then if you continue to read, some other benefits came now, and, and the, the child was healed, uh, and, 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 and a lot of things happened there. Hallelujah. Amen. But this is a good example of a person who aligned herself with the word of a servant of God. With the prophetic word. Hallelujah. Amen. When they aligned themselves with the prophetic word, with the word of the servant of God, there was fruit there. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. There was a harvest there. Amen. There was prosperity there. Amen. There was prosperity forever. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. They did not die. Amen. They were preparing to die. Hallelujah. Amen. So, today, it is important that in this home group, we pray to God. And if it was me, I'm saying to God, I'll take it to the prophetic word concerning the harvest which you have spoken to us, the fruitfulness you have spoken, the declaration of power you have spoken to us, Amen. and the measure, the change of power measure you have spoken to me. Amen. I'll take it to it. Because when I do that, there will be progress, there will be success. There will be fruit. Things will happen. Abraham believed God. 
Today, I'm increasing my faith. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I commit myself to live a life of faith. Faith in your God. Faith in your servant. Faith in your word. And I'll take heed to this prophetic word. Amen. Even to this word we have heard in this season. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us stand up on our feet right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I want, we want to raise our hands to the Father. We want to pray to God and say, God, Father, I'll take it. I commit, I'll take it. I'll take it to this word. I'll, I, I, I align myself today to the word of fruitfulness. I'm not going to be outside it. I'm going to take action. I'm going to take bold action. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let us lift up our hands and talk to God. In the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come before you this day, oh God. Father, I thank you, Father, that for, for your more sure word of prophecy, which we have in this revival. I thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, for speaking to us. In the name of Jesus Christ, to your servant, Apostle Andrew Townashen, I thank you for the word you've spoken to us, season after season. And today, Father, I make a declaration, I may take a choice, oh God, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, to align myself with this word, oh God. Father, I agree, oh God, with this word, oh God. I put myself into a place of agreement with your prophetic word, with the word which you have commanded your servant, the apostle of God, the word containing fruitfulness of God. Father, I will be a fruitful person, oh God, because you have planted me in this revival that I may bear fruit, oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ, oh God. Fruit is going to be seen, oh God, in this home group. Fruit is going to be seen in the city. Fruit is going to be seen in the United Kingdom. Fruit is going to be seen in the African revival. In the name of Jesus Christ, my father. Father, I thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the word of declaration of power, Father. Father, we are sons of power. In the name of Jesus Christ, today I declare that, oh God, the word of power, oh God, that I am a child of power. I am a son of power. I choose, oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ, to agree with your word, to agree with you, to agree with your servant, oh God, as a son, Father. Father, I will agree, oh God, I will be a son indeed. I will flow together with him, oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ, my Father. As I commit myself today, but in the name of you to love oh God and to commit me to obey your word in the name of Jesus Christ my father, father I will obey your word I will obey you father I will obey your servant, I will obey your word I will obey your prophetic word oh God father in the name of Jesus Christ my father yes in the name of Jesus Christ my father now as you continue to pray I want to say to God I will take bold action to line myself up with the word, with the word of harvest, with the word of fruitfulness with the word of changing my measure, I will take bold action to change my measure. We are mentioning it to God and saying, the word I've heard, I'm taking a bold action. I'm not just going to talk about it. Even the word to, to love, to love, I will love much and I'm going to give much also. Because it is the word you've spoken to us that he who loves much will give much. In the name of Jesus Christ, lift up your hands and talk to God. In the name of Jesus, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I commit myself for God to take bold actions of God to align myself, Father, with the word of harvest, with the word of fruitfulness, with the word, Father, of gatherings, oh God. I will gather, oh God, in the name of Jesus, I will take bold action, oh God, to gather your people, oh God, to your servant, to gather your people, people unto you, oh God, because you said in your word, and Shiloh shall be a gathering of people, Father. Let it be said, oh God, because of me, people gathered to your servant, because of me, people gathered, oh God. They had it be said, because of me, oh God, people in Leeds gather to your servant. People in United Kingdom gather to your people of heaven. People in Africa gather to your servant. In the name of Jesus Christ, oh my Father. I thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ for this word, for this prophetic word, oh God. I thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ for the spirit of sonship, oh God. Father, I will be a son indeed, oh God. And because I am a son of God, that which I see my Father do, that I will also do. In the name of Jesus Christ, I give all that glory and I give all that honor. In the mighty name of Jesus, we give glory to your name. Yes, in Jesus' name. Let's give a clear offering unto the Lord. Let's give glory to God. Hallelujah. Now we want to come to a place of giving. You know, one of the powerful statements which the servant of God uh, told us and he was ministering to us yesterday, Sunday. He said, he who love much will give much. Hallelujah. If you love God much, if you love God and you want to save him, you will give much. And God loves a cheerful giver. He said, with this measure you, me you measure with, it will be met unto you. As you give today, I want to go for a good measure. 
pressed down, shaken together, running over, that men may pour into your bosom. Our offerings for today, we are giving at our local levels that it may support the local churches. If you are not where you can give physically, but you can give electronically, you can use the numbers we always use, the echo cash we use, which is, which, which is plus 26377222375, or else you can give to uh, through those channels of giving in different nations, accounts, which uh, will be provided on the stream so that you may give. As we give, let's give with joy because God loves a cheerful giver. Let's give, let's worship, let's sing together with the worshipers as we give our offerings. In the name of Jesus, let's sing together with them. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. going to align yourself with the prophetic word, with the word of season, the word of fruitfulness, word of the harvest, and also you are going to change your measure because we have a more sure word of prophecy. Let's give a clear offering unto the Lord for his word. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you very much. I want to remind you uh, to get ready to, uh, uh, on Thursday we have our midweek service with the servant of God, the apostle. Don't lose out. Tune in on our live stream and let's gather in different places to listen to the servant of God, the apostle and make sure that you should send links to invite people to say the servant of God is now alive. Come and listen to the servant of God. And, and Sunday we are gathering together again from uh, East, and Central, East Africa and, and also in Asia. We are at the stream at 11 a.m. your time, at Central African time, we are also 11 a.m. Let's come together and listen to the servant of God, the apostle. But let's rally, let's fight to gather people to the servant of God for our Pan-African Kiffin Churches Convention from the 24th of December 2021 to the 1st of January 2022. Be there. Don't give yourself an excuse. Don't say there's coronavirus, there's COVID, there's this complication. God will make a way for you. Amen. Take a bold step. God will make a way for you. Amen. Shalom and God bless you. Bye-bye.